On July 19th, 2015, in Cincinnati, Ohio, Samuel Dubose, an unarmed black man, was fatally shot by Ray Tensing, a white University of Cincinnati police officer, during a traffic stop for a missing front license plate and a suspended driver's license. Tensing fired after Dubose started his car. Tensing stated that Dubose had begun to drive off and that he was being dragged because his arm was caught in the car. Prosecutors alleged that footage from Tensing's body cam showed that he was not dragged.
You said you came, you were living up on Rye Street? Yes, sir. So it's like it was Rye Street as you went all the way up the hill and around up to Rice to come to a complete stop. When he stopped on Rye Street, he's going to be stopping the hill and he has one problem. That's why I turned my lights on. And I believe I'm ready to advise that I'll be on Hill Street just off of line. Okay. And I was hoping my attention to where I had this floor right there on the hill just off of line so we get on track. Was there anything else about that car that you your attention to besides the main front license plate? Um, after around the day, it came back to the female <coughs> and she was under suspension. I did not see who was driving the vehicle. All I saw was that there was one person driving the vehicle and they were wearing like a red and white design shirt with a hat on. Okay, so you didn't know who was male or female? I did not know if it was a male or female. Okay. Alright. You approach the car, there's a car parked in front of this car. We stopped. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell if that vehicle was occupied? I believe it was parked. It was a silver sedan. Silver sedan. Okay. You approach the car, he refuses to give his driver's license or ID. Yes, ma'am. Do you recall removing a bottle from the vehicle? I do, yes. Uh, during the process of talking with him, um, I looked at him on the floor <coughs> and uh, there was a, a green bottle which, through my experience, it looked like a bottle of alcohol. Um, he then handed me that bottle and I looked at it for a second and I remember it saying June on it. So at that point, I took the bottle and I put it on top of the vehicle um, because I was just focused on him. I wanted to make sure I was seeing his hands and I was dealing with him. I could deal with the bottle later. At any time before attempting to leave the car and drive, did you uh, have your hand on your weapon at any time during? Uh, no, ma'am. I believe not. Okay, so not even when you went into the glove compartment? Um, I think my hand had kind of dropped that way, just in the area of my gun, but I do not recall doing anything about what I'm touching with my gun or anything like that. Okay. Because I could see when he when he opened the glove box, it was just a bunch of papers and he was just reaching for his license plate. You're a what height? I was six foot three. Six foot three. So <coughs> where are you in alignment with his the driver's side door and the window? Um, the way they usually do driver's office and the window that day was the same way. Um, since I'm so tall, I was a stand. Um, I had a bladed stance. So I stand with my body kind of facing the vehicle, um, and I had weight on my front left foot, and I'm leaning down and leaning into the vehicle, um, trying to keep us my body behind the eight pillar of the front door. When you were um, at the car door and you're in that stance, at any point in that interaction, did your uh, duty belt come attached and connected to the front door? Did your duty belt get stuck? Did it get stuck on the vehicle? If they had touched the vehicle, I leaned in and whatnot, but I never got stuck on the actual vehicle. Okay. Your intention when you drew your weapon was to do what? It was to, to stop the threat. I believe at that point, when I was being dragged by his vehicle, that he was actively trying to kill me. So in your mind at that time, if you didn't react, you couldn't kill? I would have either stopped against his vehicle and run over and kill him, or he would have gone along that car ramp and scraped me out the side of his vehicle. Yes. Did you feel 
at no point up until that time, and I know she covered this, but I want to, I want to go over it again with you. Um, at no point did your hand go to your weapon at that point when he was pointing to the glove box. It, it went towards my weapon. It just kind of dropped near my head. I did not touch my weapon. I did not holster my weapon. I did not may have played the holster at all. It just went in the area of my weapon. What did he do with the keys from the time he unlocked the glove box until he put them back in the ignition that started back up? Um, when he took the key back out of the glove box, I believe he moved it to his left hand as I was still asking him for a driver's license. Um, he then put it back in his right hand and just stuck it into the ignition without turning the key at all. Okay, so he just put it back in but did, did not turn it on. Correct. Okay, what point did he turn it on? Uh, when I advised him that he was being detained and that um, I asked him to take off the seatbelt, that that's when he reached up with his right hand and he turned it into the ignition on and started the vehicle. Okay. Um, at what point did he go to put it in here and he said the shifter was in between the seats? Immediately. The second he turned the vehicle on, his hand dropped down and he slammed it in the drive. Okay. Um, as soon as he slammed it in the drive, in fact, at that point, what was your reaction to that? At that point, my hand was inside the vehicle. Um, so was your hand inside the vehicle prior to him putting it in the drive? You know, what, I guess that's what I'm asking, what I'm trying to get at. He makes the motion, puts the key back into uh, the ignition and turns the ignition. At what point did you make that decision to try to reach in and grab it? Immediately at that point. At that point, when he turned it on. The, right at the point when he reached out and turned the vehicle on, that's why I immediately reached in with my left hand, thinking um, that I had a really good chance of knocking the key on the ignition and stopping the car right there. Uh, but he immediately, after it turned on, he slammed it in drive. So that was simultaneously. Your, that was your thought process that you could either get the key out of the ignition or keep you from turning it on. Yes. Since so I was so I was so close to his vehicle, I was already being you know over his window. I thought I'd real quick I could just grab the key and take it out. Okay, was your head ever inside the vehicle? Um, when I leaned my left arm in my head and we had across the plane of the window okay, briefly. Did was he ever aggressive towards you? The only point he became aggressive was um, when I had reached for his car door handle and advised him that he was being detained and to take off the seatbelt. That's when he reached for his left hand and again the car door back shut. Okay, but that, that was not aggression towards you, that was just a, an act of defiance, really. Correct. Right. But he waited for now. It was not good. I mean, is that, I'm just telling you what you thought of that motion. Uh, I thought it was aggressive towards me a little bit because he grabbed the door immediately and said no and pulled it back shut. And forced my hand back, you know, to where the door was closed again. Um, and at that point, it escalated. When did when did you view your body cam video? Uh, this morning, with my lawyer. With, with your lawyer in his presence. Yes, sir. And where was that? That was at his office. Okay. Did you watch the whole thing from start to finish? Yes, sir. Was it on that disc or um, something?
grand jury indicted him on charges of murder and voluntary manslaughter. He was then fired from the police department. He was released on bond before trial. A November 2016 trial ended in mistrial after the jury became deadlocked. A retrial begun in May 2017 also ended in a hung jury. The charges against Tensing were later dismissed with prejudice.